last year, PC building has become a lot more expensive. And unfortunately, that is in just about every part. GPUs are now ballooning to over $1,000. Power supplies, which you used to be able to get for sub $100, are starting to bump up against $200. Motherboards are twice as expensive as they used to be, and CPUs are not much better. But there are a couple of areas where we've got a little bit of relief. And Fractal... Fractal is bringing the budget game to the extra large case market. This does say Excel, and I did buy this case for just $100. Today, let's take a look at the Fractal Design Pop XL Air computer case. Yeah, this is gonna be an interesting one because the last XL case we took a look at was actually really nice from Fractal. Hello and welcome. My name is Wolfie, you're watching Greater Than Pi, and today we're taking a look at the Pop Air XL. Don't know why it's called the Pop XL Air. This case is fairly unique, even among computer cases. Mainly, one, for its price, and two, its smaller brethren actually come in multiple colors. Additionally, there are a couple weird features that both of those cases actually support, such as a five and a quarter bay. There's actually two of them in here. This also came with four RGB fans, since the XL only comes with an RGB option. Unfortunately, while the colors are really cool from the basic version, the XL does not have such options. It only comes in white and black. Based off of the air portion of the name, you can assume that this is an airflow focus case, and it actually has some features cut back for water cooling that haven't been cut away in most cases for a while, such as on the top only being able to support a 280 millimeter radiator, and in the front being able to support a 360 millimeter radiator. But where this case lacks a lot of frill, it makes up for in spades by just its price alone. That's right, this case is a budget case. So let's, let's open this box and actually see what corners Fractal might have cut in order to make this such a budget case. Okay, right off the top here. We don't actually have as much packaging as we normally have on a fractal case, but it doesn't look like it's any insufficient amount. Ah. Huh. This is the front of the case. I was right about that being the top. Okay. A little bit more manageable at this size than uh, with the box. So how do I get, well, first off, right off, off this part of the bag, there's a dust filter. Looks like this is for the top of the case itself. It does look like this. Looks good. Come right off. And that reveals our manual. Put this right on there. Dust filter. Optional. Don't need it really, but it looks good. And actually, this is doing one of my favorite trends of uh, as of late. And it's using geometric shapes. These are triangles. Nice and good for airflow. So this case should have a pretty decent airflow pattern going. Let's take a look at the front in which you'll see more, more airflow actually. The pop, the front has three fans already installed for intake and it actually has this nice kind of like divoted box pattern. I didn't know that this was actually gonna be like textured. It's actually really cool. Up top, we have an optional like literally missing on here, USB-C upgrade spot, along with two USB 3.0, headphone and microphone separately, an RGB button slash reset button if you hook it up that way, and a power button, which does feel pretty nice. Now you may be looking at the front here and going, where's this five and a quarter bay? The answer is actually right here. It's discreetly hidden. It also has a uh, junk drawer that you can put whatever you want in. For this case, our side panel is tempered glass, and then our back side panel is, of course, metal this time. Actually, that's not really a given with Fractal. <laughs> they do all sorts of things. So let's go ahead and uh, take off this. Oh, we tightened this a gorilla? Thumb screws are captive, actually. Oh, well, that's kind of nice to see. All right, how does it pop off? Do we guys pull? What are we doing? Oh, we slide. It's been a little while since I've seen that mechanism, but if it works, it works. So we can get a good look at the inside of the case, actually. 
I may want to move that tempered glass somewhere else. As you can see, the interior here is actually quite spacious, and that is because it will support some EATX motherboards. Now, EATX is not a standard, so unfortunately, uh, it's hard to tell which ones will and will not fit in here, but it's a lot of room, so you could probably fit something pretty significant. And here we can also see our fourth fan, which is installed in the back. Everything seems to be cable routed pretty nicely also, so that everything can just bloop right into the back here. We've got some space here, but not too, too much. If you wanted to, there is spacing here to do some sort of uh, liquid cooling reservoir. You can technically install a rad in here as well by adjusting some pieces, but I do think that this is more or less a airflow focused case. Around the back, you can see that Fractal's commitment to airflow has not been diluted as the entire back of this case is just more ventilation, which is kind of crazy. We'll see. Oh, these were actually finger tight and they are captive as well. Now that I know how they come off, that's a heavy panel. It's actually a pretty heavy panel. Oh, look at that. Cable managed pretty nicely, actually. So we've got all of our RGB right over here. More RGB, more fan connectors. Everything's pretty nicely organized. And oh, right where our front panel connectors are is where our accessories are. So we've got our drive sled accessories for mounting, motherboard accessories for mounting, etc. Now it does have this cool plate right here. This plate, if I'm not mistaken, allows you to mount SSDs externally and then of course mount it to the case itself if you would like. Then there is a drive cage right here. You can fit up to two of these behind the main portion of the case. This is the same installation method that can be found inside the Define series. And there's another two. Wow, how do you, how do you even get to these? They're like gorilla tight in there. But uh, there's another two down here at the bottom uh, that I would actually have to remove for one of the modifications that I want to make. Okay, that's one. And there's two. So if you do want to install something in the five and a quarter bay, you are going to have to remove these drives in order to get the space. Now, what's cool is you do have two full size five and a quarter bays down here, which would allow you to do all sorts of things like hot swap drive bays, uh, which is what we're gonna be using, uh, CD drive bays if you really wanted to, those kind of things. Got another peel right here. And it looks like our RGB fans are not PWM. Now that's interesting. That's one area that they that they could save on feasibly. Oh, and there's the RGB connector right up there. So yeah, you could just kind of daisy chain them together and then put them right into the RGB controller. Cable management wise, see we've got our channels up here and then a pretty spacious bottom along with more cable tie points along the actual body of it itself. This one is indented, which is great because more room between the back panel and the power supply, the better. We got about two and a half centimeters at its deepest point, And then we've got about one and a half at its shallowest point. That's not too bad for cable management wise. All right, so then how do we get this from panel? It's gonna, oh, okay. Yep, that's out. You just kind of yank on it. All right, that's a install method I haven't seen in a while either. Uh, push pins. <laughs> that's uh, that's probably the most budget thing I think I've seen on this case so far. You can see that it's actually a unibody design. It's actually very rigidly done along here, here, along here, and then here, which means that there's not really much room to take it apart full further, and it really wouldn't be all that moddable. Uh, one downside is this dust filter in shipping has already become damaged to the point that I personally wouldn't use it, but we'll keep it there for right now. It's definitely uh, creased. 
Okay, it looks like I was slightly off on what it supports over here. It looks like we can fit a 140 millimeter fan. And how is this? There's literally, oh, there's like a little cable bracket over here. I'm gonna really like tie this bad boy down. Um, yeah, I would be replacing these. They're definitely not the best. I mean, they're great if you're just trying to get started with it. But I think in this case in particular, I would probably go for some Noctua's. Uh, that's more or less my, my personal preference. This case doesn't seem like it'd be overly flashy, nor would the builds that you build in it be overly flashy. Okay, so here's where I'm curious about. Oh yeah, you'd have NHD 15 room in here. <laughs> the, uh, the actual NHD 15, let's see, the motherboard would sit about half to this high. Yeah, you'd get an NHG 15 in here, no problem. And due to its budget nature, it's actually a really approachable case for a lot of people. Quality wise, the edges are rolled, which is really nice to see, especially in a case this large at this cost. It feels pretty sturdy, like there's really no case flex in it whatsoever. Downside, fans aren't really great, but no pre-included fan really is, and at $100, I'm just going to replace the fans with Noctua fans because I'm planning on actually making this into my air-cooled test bed system. Yep, this case is going to become a standard system on our channel, and I'm planning on getting the white one in order to be the Intel-based system. So this one's going to have the AMD one, and it's actually going to house the same system that's currently on my desk. And with this case being mostly the same height, that's going to work great. The big reason that I was drawn to this case was actually these five and a quarter bays because I'm going to actually set up a hot swap system that allows me to switch between AMD or NVIDIA GPUs and also Linux distros with AMD and NVIDIA GPUs. So the plan is to actually have this as a nice, easy, swappable system. But that is where we are gonna end it today, guys. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed watching this unboxing, Give it a like, maybe comment, subscribe, check out our merch shelf below, and you can even give us a super thanks if you really like our videos and it helps our channel greatly. It'll make this project a lot easier to do along with the super build than any of the other PC testing that we need to do on this channel. Thank you guys again. Wolfie, out.